we are wise to take a look at the scriptures. There's at least three occasions that it shows us that Jesus was angry. One of them is in Mark chapter 3. This is Jesus and the Pharisees. It's where Jesus, there was a, a, a man with a withered hand. There was one problem, though. It was on the Sabbath day, and Jesus knew this man needed to be healed. His hand was withered. Jesus saw the need and was ready to, to heal him. But he noticed the Pharisees around him, watching him to see what he's going to do on the Sabbath. That it was against the law to perform anything like that, to do anything like that, to do anything on the Sabbath. So, so <clears throat> Jesus stretched out his hand and told him to be whole. And his withered hand became straight, became normal. But it is recorded there that when Jesus looked around, he looked at them with anger, being grieved by their hardness of heart. Being grieved to anger by their hardness of heart. Jesus was angry at their sin. Jesus was also angry another time with his disciples. There was a time in Mark 10 verse 13 through 16, where some people were bringing their children to Jesus. You might recall that. And as they were bringing the children, the disciples said, no, 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 no. He doesn't have time for y'all. Just, just go away. He doesn't have time for that. So it, it's recorded that Jesus became greatly displeased with his disciples. Why was he displeased? Because they were trying to keep them, the children, from coming to him. What Jesus says, let the children come to me and don't forbid, forbid them for such is the kingdom of God. Jesus then used them as an example. Unless you become like one of these, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. He used them as a sermon. That's how important they were to him. And then probably the, the most well-known example of Jesus' anger was Jesus with the temple merchants in John chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. I'll read it. He found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. And when he had made a whip of cords, he drew them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money. And he overturned the tables. He said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Well. There's more to the story than maybe we realize. But you see, the priest had made a sweet deal with these merchants. Here's the deal. As that when the people come to us to bring their animals, there's only one place they can worship, right? And there's only one way they can worship. They have to worship with sacrifices. So all these thousands of people are bringing their sacrifices. The priest says, when they come and bring the sacrifices, we'll reject it. This is no good. This is blemished. But we'll tell them we know where there's some unblemished ones right over there. So they'll come to your table and buy the, quote, authorized sacrifice. So naturally, the priest would got some... some some money for that, for doing that. Some payment was done for that. So this is kind of like an ecclesiastical extortion. Here are the people, think about it, they're coming to worship. And here there's re religious leaders are ripping them off, taking advantage of them. Jesus got angry. But there's even more. More that the reason why he got angry is because where did they have this money changing going on, the selling of, of animals? It was in the outer court, which was known as the court of the Gentiles. And Jesus, let's say God, had purpose, even the purpose of Jews would be to bring forth a Savior that the whole world could be saved. And the temple was set up so that it was God's heart that those who were outside of the Jewish culture would behold the, the mighty God of the Jews and come and worship there, come to inquire there. Come to seek this God who was so amazing. 
But now there was no room for these unbelieving Gentiles who were wanting to discover about God. There was no room for them to worship. So Jesus rose up. By the way, notice his control. It says he went and, and made a whip. How long does it take to make a whip? I don't know. Maybe even if you're quick, it's still going to be a few minutes, right? He calculated. Then he went back. Ah! <laughs> Kicking over the tables and out of here. You're making my father's house a house of merchandise, a den of thieves. And you can be sure he didn't say that softly. <laughs> Those prices, by the way, that they charged, maybe we can relate to uh, Super Bowl prices. If you were to go to the Super Bowl, how much would you pay for a Coke? How much would you pay for a hot dog? You know, it's going to be a lot more than you'd pay anywhere else because it's the Super Bowl. And that's the way they were doing with the people. What makes Jesus' anger different from yours or mine? What sanctified his anger? Why is ours oftentimes sinful and his is righteous indignation? Well, I think part of it is the key. Part of the key is the object of his wrath. I believe there's three criteria for righteous indignation or righteous anger. And the first is it reacts against sin. Again, not against the the, the people, but the sin in the people. The way to be angry and not sin is to be angry at nothing but sin. But secondly, it focuses on God. Notice how Jesus said, don't let, let those children come to me. Don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom. Notice his kingdom concern. Notice his, his, his passion for, and zeal for God's kingdom, his heavenly Father's kingdom. Righteous anger focuses on God and His concerns, not us in our concerns. Notice that when, when they came against Jesus and accused Him of all manner of things, what did He do? It says He said, not a word. Not a word. But when it came to His heavenly Father in His kingdom, He rose up, threw them out, spoke up, took action. Amen? He's our kind of man. He's our kind of God. And thirdly, uh, a third criteria for righteous anger is it expresses itself in godly ways. 